Okay, disclaimer. This is a built from scratch world. There are terms and names that I will 100% fuck up the pronunciation of. I'm telling you guys up front before I've even done my opening. It's coming. Get ready for it. If I mispronounce anything, tough titties. That's that's it. I'm doing my best. Okay. Um, any other disclaimers? I'm very tired. I'm very manic. And I don't do well with these. Normally, when I'm like fully rested and you know, you know, but I'm not, so you know. <laughs> okay, so hi, welcome. <laughs> hi, um, my name is Candace, and I'm your host. Welcome back to another episode of What the Smart Booker Is. I sing it every time now, and I don't know why or how that came about. Um, I think I just did it like two times in a row, and after that, it just became a thing. So now it's a thing. I'm sorry. If you don't enjoy it, tell me and I'll stop. I mean, I think like four people watch my videos. If y'all don't like it, just tell me and I'll, and I'll stop. <laughs> um, in today's video, I'm hype. I'm so hype. Like you would think I'm, I wouldn't be hype with as late as I'm currently recording, which I won't tell you what time it is, um, but I'm hype. So in today's video, we're going to be reviewing this book. This is The Warlord by author Gina Showalter. Gina. You my boo. I love you so much. Um, this book was just released on April 20th? 20th? Yes. Okay. So this past Tuesday. I don't know what day it is right now. I don't know what day it, this is going to upload. But it's, this book just came out recently. Okay. I was granted um, an advanced reader copy, an ARC of this book by Net Galley and Harlequin. So I started it before a lot of other people started it. I finished it after a lot of other people finished it. Because if you're familiar, you know I'm terrible. You know it takes me forever to read a book. So... Um, I think I got it like three or four days before it released. And then I finished it like two, three days after it released, right? So not terrible, not too bad, but not, still not good. Still not good. Candace, you, you can do better. Um, this is, like I said, this book is called The Warlord. This is the first book in a new spinoff series called Rise of the Warlords. If you are familiar with Gina Showalter's Lords of the Underworld series. This is a spin-off series of that series. So if you read all of those books, you would know that almost all of the Lords, not counting some angels and, and things that still need to be resolved, um, all of the Lords have been paired off. They got their books. They're done. We're, we're, we're moving into another phase, right? This is the first book, but it does feature a very prominent character from the Lords of the Underworld series, and that is Talia, and, okay, again, disclaimer, see prior disclaimer. As I read the book, I pronounced it Talia. I have listened to the audio version of some of the Lords of the Underworld books where Talia is present, and they pronounced her name Talia. No, I just can't, I'm sorry. In my brain, I read it as Talia, and that's how it's going to stay. So, her name is Talia. <laughs> uh, so, Talia Skyhawk is a harpy. She's a badass harpy. She's a virgin harpy. And she is, um, they call her uh, Talia the Terror of All Lands, a.k.a. Talia the Cold-Hearted, because she is virtually emotionless most of the time, or like when she's doing her kills or whatever. Talia is part of the Skyhawk clan. Her mother, Tabitha, is um, a renowned bitchy harpy. 
uh, who's a very hard ass to her kids. Um, she has several sisters, uh, Bianca, Kaya, and Gwen, Gwendolyn. All of the other sisters have been paired up with either a Lord of the Underworld or an angel from her uh, Gina's uh, Angels of the Dark series, which is like a sub-series of Lords of the Underworld. Series inside of series inside of series. Um, so yeah. So Talia was the last that needed a Manzuses. So she gonna get her Manzuses. I, okay. I'm a member of Gina's reader group on Facebook. It's called Gina Show Walters Legions. If you're not a member, but you're a fan of Gina's, you should go join because it's an amazing group. There's constantly like sneak peeks to stuff and like teases. Gina's social media manager, uh, Naomi, who's a very sweet, very, she's like a rose. Beautiful, absolutely gorgeous, covered in thorns and constantly pricking me with teasers <laughs> that drive me insane. Um, but she's very good at her job and she's constantly posting things that keep you frothing at the mouth for what's coming next in the Gina Show Walzer world. So, um, where the fuck was I going with that? I don't know. I brought brought up the group for a reason. Okay, so if you read the books, the Lord of the Underworld series, when Talia made appearances in that series and in books for Angels of the Dark, she had a very weird relationship. Not weird, bad weird. Good weird. A very weird relationship with Hades. Like Hades, king, like king, one of the kings of the underworld type, right? Um, they had a lot of sexual chemistry, which led a lot of us to believe that Hades and Talia would end up, end up together in a future book. When this book was announced, and it was announced that Talia was in this, but Hades was not, a lot of us were like, what? The more we learned about the book, and the more we learned about who Talia gets paired up with, the more we were like, okay. But we, like, Gina, we trust you, girl. We know that you're not going to totally fuck us over. So we're going to give you the benefit of the doubt that you know what you're doing. You better know what you're doing. Do I, do I want Hades' book? Yes. I need it. Like, he's so... We all got a thing for like the bad boy, right? And Hades is like, the bad boy. Okay. 10 minutes in, I haven't told you anything about the book. I haven't told you any of the details about the book. Bring it down. Okay. Rewind. According to Amazon, this book has 340 pages. I don't know if that's accurate. Because the page, page number differs between like hardcover, Kindle version, right? Right, because the difference in size of page. Okay. You can get this book right now for your Kindle and Nook for $11.99. I've heard some people complain. And by some people, I mean one person. I saw write a bad review on Amazon for this book. Not because they bought the book and they didn't like it, but because they didn't want to buy the book because they said it was too expensive. Why? Okay. I'm not going to personally attack you, but you're an idiot. Anyway, um, you, the reason I think that this book is $11.99 for your Kindle or for the digital download is because this book was only released in hardcover to begin with. It will eventually be released in mass market paperback. I believe the tentative date for mass market is November 30th of this year. At that time, the mass market will be $9.99. Um, the hardcover you can get on Amazon for $19.32. If you have a Walmart near you, Walmart has an exclusive deal with Gina. She signed, I think the number was something like 10,000 copies of the book that you can get 
exclusively at Walmart. So the hardcover edition, like the one that I have here, which has this sticker on it that says only at Walmart, signed bonus copy. If you look inside, Gina signed the inside of the book. Walmart retails this book for $16 and change. So a signed copy for less money than buying it on Amazon. If you if you have if you have a Walmart, go go to see if you can find it because it's a better deal. So I will read you guys the blurb for the book and then we can talk about it a little bit, but I'm gonna try and make it brief because again I'm already twenty like twelve minutes in and then I haven't said anything about the book. So um, the blurb for this one says, for centuries, Talia Skyhawk has prepared to become Harpy General, leader of the deadliest female army in existence. One of the requirements, remain a virgin, but for a chance to save her people, she must wed the fearless leader of the Astra Planeta, a lark, Phaethon, Phaethon? You knew, you knew what you were getting yourself into. The time has come for Rock to sacrifice another virgin bride to his god. There has never been a woman alluring enough to tempt him from his path. No warrioress powerful enough to overcome his incredible strength. No enchantress desirable enough to make him burn beyond reason. Until now. You knew that was good. With the clock ticking, war between husband and wife ignites. Except Talia never expected the merciless king to challenge the future she once envisioned. She certainly never anticipated the thrill of their battles turning into games. The problem is, only one spouse can survive. Okay, so. Talia is the, fe the main female character. The main male character is a guy named Alaric. I pronounced his name Alaric. Like, as if it had an I, even though it's got an O. Like, Alaric. Most of the book, they refer to him as Rock. That's fine. That's better for me. That's easier for me. Um, Rock is the current commander of the Astra Planeta, which is a band of, um, like, cosmic-type warriors, if that makes sense. Um, they serve the god Chaos, Chaos, essentially, they, they go through a series of trials, like every 500 years, where each one of the members of the Astro Planeta have to uh, essentially complete a task. Every time it's the same task, but with different characters. Each one must complete a task. If each one succeeds at the task, if all of them succeed, they get a blessing from the god and a weapon of some kind. Um, and the blessing is essentially that for the next 500 years, they will win every battle that they fight. If even one of them fails their trial or their task, the weapon automatically goes to their number one enemy and they're then cursed to lose every battle for the next 500 years. The enemy in question is the son of Chaos, and his name is Erebus. He had a twin brother, and he's a, the twin brother died. But Erebus is essentially like a uh, an evil phantom creating gross dude right? Um, he creates phantoms, which are females that he then uses, like, he has, like, an army of, like, ghostly, gross phantom women. Um, him and Rock are mortal enemies. So, Rock's task every 500 years is to find a virgin bride, keep her from Erebus' clutches for 30 days while he builds an altar and then subsequently sacrifices her on that altar to chaos. Like, he kills he kills his wife. Um, he's like, 
a black, I think at one point Talia refers to him as the black widower. <laughs> so he has been scoping Harpina, which is where the Harpy nation is. Uh, he's been scoping it out and he's seen this delectable platinum blonde who basically embodies everything that he wants in a woman. And he and he and his army invade Harpina and take over. They put all of the harpies to sleep in like a duplicate realm that they've created. And he basically goes to Talia and he says, hey, um, I've taken over. You're going to be my wife. We're going to get married. And in 30 days, I'm going to kill you. Um, you can feel free to challenge me within that 30 days. If you win and you kill me before the 30 days is up, then you'll get control of my army. But I won't let that happen because I owe it to my men to keep them alive and make sure we get the blessing so that they don't get killed in battle. Okay. And Erebus is also a piece of shit and we don't want him to get anything right. So they start a very tumultuous uh, relationship. Their marriage is literally like love is a battlefield. I think, I think that's like the catchphrase at the bottom of the Amazon review for this thing. Um, and it's true. They battle over everything. Like they fight about everything. Talia will not budge an inch. She's literally, she, Talia is um, in contention for Harpy General which is essentially the leader of the um, Harpy army. In order for her to get to that point, she has to get, I think, like 10 stars. And they're like mystical tattoos that, that show up on like her wrist. And right now she has eight stars. Each star um, can be gained by completing like some kind of task. I think like a, one of them, she has to sacrifice something dear to her or whatever. And it's similar to what basically what Rock has to do. He, um, he wants to also ascend to a higher level of being and join chaos uh, as a god. And he can't do that until he has fulfilled all of his tasks. And one of his tasks is, his task is, basically killing something that's very important to him. And he's been doing this re this Groundhog Day type situation uh, of killing his wives in the hope that that will help him ascend. And it has not because he never really cared about any of those bitches, right? Um, well, now he's growing attached to Talia and he's like, oh shit, how am I going to kill you in 30 days when you're literally the most attractive thing I've ever seen and you know right it doesn't help that he comes to the realization that she's like his faded female so the astro planeta um when they meet there I think the way that it's okay I'm gonna do it again the way that it's pronounced in the book the way it looks like it's pronounced in the book is gravita I don't know if that's accurate Gina I'm sorry um, but that's basically what they call their faded mate, their faded female. Uh, when they find their faded female, they will produce, uh, something called stardust on their hands and they'll basically mark their woman with the stardust. And that's how they know they have found their true person. Right? So he creates stardust only for Talia and he's like, fuck chaos knows that Talia is my, is my person and he still let me marry her. And so he's feeling like a little betrayed. So over the course of the book, him and Talia become close to each other and neither one of them wants to kill the other, but rock has a duty to his men and he's like stuck between a rock and a hard place. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't plan that. That just happened. Talia would rather fight her way out of every possible situation instead of 
accept defeat. Talia is also has a very complicated backstory. So remember how I said that Erebus, um, Rock's nemesis, had a twin brother? They frequently like embodied each other. And many a moon ago, they came to Harpina and they had sex with two of the harpies, impregnating both of them. They were sisters. One is Talia's mom. The other is Talia's aunt. Both women gave birth to harpy children who were also half phantom because Erebus is a phantom piece of shit, right? Phantom creating piece of shit. Um, so Talia in the beginning of the book also has to like somehow break it to rock that, hey, you hate phantoms because Erebus is your, is your, the bane of your existence and he creates phantoms. Uh, you find them to be like soul sucking creatures of the night. Um, I'm half phantom. So where, where do we go from here? <laughs> um, he takes that actually rather well. He's not as turned off as he should be. Because by that point, he's lusting off to, like after her hardcore. Um, and yeah, so essentially, like Talia has grown up being like hiding her phantom self or her like her phantom half. And she used to hear like terrible screams anytime, like. The, in her head, like they, she'd just hear shrieks all the time. Uh, she didn't know who they were, where they were coming from, but they were like phantom shrieks. Her friend Nika, who is um, like a, she's like a deaf oracle, uh, she created this like ring for her that will like silence the screams when she wears it. So later on in the book, Talia comes to the realization that she needs to train herself to not wear the ring and like just deal with the, the with the screams because she sees it as a weakness. And so she attempts to do that while she's uh, doing this. She uncovers that the screams belong to uh, harpies who were turned into phantoms when Erebus and his brother basically invaded Harpina, like many, all those years ago when he, he knocked up her mom. Um, he basically buried the harpy slash phantom army that he created underneath Harpina. And they've been there ever since, basically trapped in dirt. And she's hearing the screams. Uh, because she's also half phantom, she can hear that shit, and they're down there. So she essentially releases them from their prison. So it comes out at, towards the end of the book that Chaos knew that Talia was his granddaughter, and he still sacrificed her because he in himself is attempting to ascend to a higher level of being. And for his great sacrifice, he's not only sacrificing his granddaughter, but he's also sacrificing Rock because he knows that Rock is going to fail and that he's going to either, it's a win-win situation for him. Either Rock kills Talia and he loses his, his granddaughter and he ascends, or Rock refuses to kill Talia and Rock has to live with the fact that his men are going to die and, and blah, 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 blah. And he, he realizes that, that chaos betrayed him, basically. And so he's going to, chaos is going to lose rock or that like special relationship that they had. And that will be his sacrifice. Either way, he thinks he's going to like, right? So he's also, he's a piece of shit too. Like, let's just say, like he, he reminds me a lot of Cronus from the Lords of the Underworld series. Like he's very like, I know everything. I'm gonna play this hand in the background that the fuck, it, fuck what happens with all of you. Like whatever. Okay. So 
D-Day comes, right? And Talia basically says, I'm going to walk to the altar. Rock at this point does not want to kill her. He has determined that he would rather Erebus get whatever mystery weapon they, they were going to get. And they go into hibernation. The astral planets have go into hibernation for 500 years and fight no battles so that his men will also live. He will be demoted to the last in rank. He'll lose his title as commander in order to not have to kill Talia and spare her life because he loves her. Talia does not want him to give it up. He, she has run out of the options. She, in the beginning, was like, no, fuck this. We're not going to accept this as, as a thing. We're going to find another way. We're going to find a way to break the curse. We're going to find a way to do this. Now, Judgment Day has come, and she has no other options. So she dresses in her harpy finest, and she goes to greet death, basically. So when she gets there, Rock basically looks at her and says, I'm not going to kill you. I refuse. I'm not going to do it. I love you. She says, I love you too, but I have to save you from yourself. And then she stabs herself. <laughs> she essentially kills herself to spare Rock from having to make that choice. She doesn't know because she's half phantom. She had died previously several times and every time she would wake up like she would come back this time. She's a hundred percent sure she's 99.9% .9 sure. She's not going to come back. She does it anyway. Rock is devastated. He goes on the war path. He freaks out. He goes after Erebus and tries to kill him. Because, you know, Erebus is just on the sidelines laughing because this is all a big fucking game to him. Uh, he goes after Erebus and tries to kill him. Chaos intervenes, stops him from kill, killing Erebus, and lets Erebus, like, scamper off. Talia regenerates, or like, like a phoenix. Like, what, what the fuck am I trying to say? She comes back to life. And she earns her last stars because she sacrificed herself. So she's now Harpy General. Fuck the whole virgin thing. She was like, that's out. Like, I'm, I'm, we don't have a general right now. I'm taking, I'm not going to ask for it. I'm taking it. Taking the mantle of general. I'm still going to bone my husband because I want to. And there's going to be like some regime. There's going to be some changes around here. Right? She doesn't care. She's like, no, this is the way it's going to be. And you're welcome to challenge me and I will wipe the floor with you. But this is the way it's going to be. And everybody else is like, she's a bad this. Like, she's a bad bitch. Right? Um, and they're now able to basically live happily ever after. Because why not? Because love prevails. That's all, that's all I can say. Okay, so the astral planeta are now hanging around Harpina with the harpies, you know, mixing it up, getting in some trouble. We'll see what happens. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much the end of the book. So um, that was very long winded, quite terrible quite terrible review. <laughs> I probably left out a lot. I, I may have gotten a few things, a few details off a little bit, but that's the best I can do because it's late and I'm tired and I really wanted to get this review done as soon as possible. I still have to edit it and clip out all the times where I just went, oh, <laughs> because I didn't, I lost the plot. Um, but yeah, so uh, I don't think that this video will go live before I was giving away a signed copy of this book, but I don't think this video will go live before the deadline for that giveaway. But 
Um, I am only a few people off from hitting 300 subscribers. Can you believe it? And most of them I don't know in real life, so I can't even be like, oh, it's most of my family and friends. <laughs> um, and I'm also close to my 100th video upload. I know. I know. How have I, not, how have I not been booed off the internet by now? Inquiring minds want to know. Um, when those two things happen, I will be doing massive giveaways for both of those. So if you have not joined me on social media, I would highly suggest that you do that. Um, I do have a members only Facebook group, an Instagram and a Twitter account devoted to this channel. And that is where I will post about the giveaways first. So if you would like to keep track of that, when that happens, you can also keep track of like sneak peeks to upcoming videos and stuff. Follow me on social media. If you like me and you like my channel, please consider subscribing. I would really appreciate it. It would mean a lot. Thank you. Um, for the rating for this book, I gave it a 9.5, nine and a half. It's like the highest rating that I give to books because I never give any book a 10 because I have to leave like that little bit of wiggle room for something to like blow my head off. You know what I mean? Um, so nine and a half, which I love this book. I absolutely love this book. I would highly suggest you guys pick up this book. I would highly suggest that you guys delve into this series. If you have not read her Lords of the Underworld series, you may want to go back and read those just so that you will be familiar with a good number of the characters that show up in this book, but you don't have to. This is like the first standalone novel in a new spinoff series. So you don't have to read the Lords of the Underworld in order to keep up with this plot. This plot is quite separate from like the back, the main backstory of the Lords of the Underworld series. Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, I really thank you guys so much for watching another video. Um, I love you guys so much and I will see you in my next one. Bye. Okay, let us begin. Okay, I'm gonna try and like do my best to breeze through this because it's a very detailed plot and I know I'm gonna fuck it up. while I wait for this asinine rabbit to drink his water. <sighs> Tea! Okay. You good? You good? No? Not yet? Okay, cool. I don't want to be mad, but I just can't. Dang. Okay. You done? You done? So, like I said, what was, where was I? Um, what was I going to say? Anyway. which Erebus knew was going to happen, but Okay. Okay. 
Okay. Terrible. Terrible video. This one was terrible. The one I did before this one was terrible. So satisfying. Ugh. Terrible. Everything, Candace, everything you do is bad. Why is that? I don't know. <laughs> I can't. like one of those hair waver things like waves gives you like waves it didn't it didn't it, like I'm wavy but I'm not I think it would look good on someone whose hair was long like if you have really long hair and you had waves they'd look really good because you could leave the top flat and then you could just wave like the bottom part and it look like really sultry and attractive um on me though where my hair is like four inches long not so much because now I look like I'm someone from the roaring 20s like with this with this joint here which is fine I don't I, I don't care I don't care about my hair anymore it's it's like that's what I do okay I dye my hair it comes out whatever color it comes out I keep it until it fades a couple weeks and then I dye it a different color sometimes I like bleach the color out to put on a new color, most of the time I don't. I just put one color on top of another color. So it's like Russian roulette with hair color because I never know. Well, first of all, I never know if this is gonna be the color that makes my hair fall out. <laughs> Mostly I don't know what color I'm gonna end up with, so. Like I don't get it. If I'm not in here recording, this rabbit literally will sleep like all day. The second I sit down to record, he needs to drink water and he needs to have food and he needs to stretch and he needs to scuttle around in his shavings and he needs to chew on the bars of the cage. Like, can you not? Like, I'd really appreciate it. Like, I'm bad enough as it is without you breaking my fucking concentration. Anyway, I love you guys and I will see you in my next video. I don't know what it's going to be about. I don't know if it's going to be a review or a bullshit video. I don't know. But I'll see you. I'll see you then as I bleed eyeliner all over the place. Whatever. <laughs>